nothing like a home game against the Boston Red Sox to get you refocused. Yes, yeah, some of the young fans getting the W.B. Mason delivery truck tonight as they come through the gates as the Phillies begin this quick two-game homestand against the Red Sox, and then they've got the Mets coming in. It's a pretty big stretch for the Phillies as they're a game out in the National League East coming into tonight's ball game. NBC Sports Philadelphia, home of the authentic fan, presents the Red Sox and the Phillies. All right, so the stretch ahead for the Phillies includes these two against the Red Sox, but the all-important games against the division, five against the Mets, and then six combined against the Nationals. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with John Crook. All right, so the Phillies take on the Red Sox for the second time this year. Certainly, they held their own the last time they faced the Boston Red Sox, but this is arguably the best team in Major League Baseball. Who are you arguing with? Well, I was thinking about the Astros and a couple other teams. But. No, no, this is the best team in baseball right here. Just get Chris Sale off the disabled list. So that should help them a little bit if you think Chris Sale's a good pitcher, which we all do. But, I mean, look, these are just silly numbers, 85 and 35, 50 games over 500. If they play 500 ball the rest of the way, they will break the all-time winning, all-time mark for franchise win record set in 1912 by who else? <laughs> Babe Ruth, but they are to, they are a day not dynamic team. They have great pitching. Kimbrell at the end is as good as you get, but that offense, if the Phillies are going to do any damage in this series, they got to contain this offense. And they've got to score some runs also, which certainly has been hard to do, particularly off this last road trip. But we know that Reese Hoskins moving from the two-hole down to the four-hole, this may help change the offense a little bit. Yeah, Tom, and I like the fact that he's going to have a switch hitter hitting in front of him and a switch hitter hitting behind me. It's going to be tough for Alex Cora, the manager of the Red Sox, to, to maneuver around that situation with Reese hitting in the four spot. But he is better at home. We all know that. Strong Struggled on the road this last road trip. Was not a good road trip for Reese Hoskins. But if the Phillies are going to do damage in this division and, and, and overtake the Braves and win this division, this is the guy that has to get hot and to carry this team the rest of the way. Well, this season at home, he has 13 home runs, 46 RBIs, but 324 batting average here at home over his last nine games. And let's face it, we have learned that the way Reese goes or how Reese goes is really how the Phillies offense goes. All right, so tonight is game one of this quick two-game series. It will be Nick Pavetta, who had one of his best games of his career against the Red Sox last year, against Rick Porcello, who certainly has turned things around from last season. Lineups and first pitch when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. By Toyota, the national clearance event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, official bank of the Phils. Visit citizensbank.com. And by Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com.
already taken the field as his team follows behind as the Red Sox are in town for these two games as the Phils who are now in second place of the National League East try to get back to the top spot a spot that they held for over a month and the Braves won two yesterday so that's why they took over the top spot let's look at the Red Sox lineup brought to you by Xfinity the fastest internet in Philadelphia well there's not a better signing in all baseball than J.D. Martinez was this past offseason by the Red Sox he owns so many of the top categories for Boston and there he is right in the middle he's playing right field tonight Jackie Bradley Jr. will play right field tomorrow for the Red Sox and they will face right header Nick Pavetta the 25 year old from Victoria British Columbia comes in with a record of seven and nine an earned run average of four point five one his uh, last couple starts have been very good and he seems to be back on track and let's face it you look back at the young career of Nick Pavetta one of his best outings came against these Red Sox last year and John the Phillies hope that he could uh, kind of do what he's been doing these last couple of outings and they can score some runs for him. Yeah the big key though for for Nick of course is secondary pitches especially against this Red Sox team if you're not getting your secondary pitches over and they can just set on the old number one it is going to be a short night for any pitcher in baseball with the firepower that these Red Sox possess. Yeah it's interesting because they don't have the designated hitter they don't have Jackie Bradley Jr. in the lineup today. But they do have Buki Betts who's playing center field for Jackie Bradley Jr. You know, with Bradley's in the lineup tomorrow Betts will move back over to right field. Gabe Kapler is hoping that being home will help the Phillies quiet these Red Sox and J.D. Martinez. Let's take a look at our Nissan upgrade upgrade to the technology of tomorrow today our highest run differential. The Red Sox are at plus 213. It's not bad. No, not at I all. I mean, if you like to win a lot of games, it's pretty uh, good. But, I mean, even the uh, Astros at plus 195. What fun is that when you're just annihilating every team? Right, you're more of a pitcher duel kind of guy. I'm more of a one nothing type. Yeah, right. All right, come on, Nick, get it started early. Uh, Bookie Betts leads it off, and the first pitch of the night has popped up on the right side of the diamond. Now Santana looked at Hernandez, but he finds it. Uh oh. And he makes the catch one away. It'd be a nice quick game if everybody swung yeah, at the first Nick's pitch. Nick's on pace for 27 pitches. That brings Andrew Benintendi up to the plate. Benintendi was two for 11 of the series against the Orioles. Since the Phillies last saw the Red Sox, he was having a good year, but he has been on fire. Pitch fastball low and it's one and oh. That's 70 RBIs for Bennett Tendy hit mainly in the two spot in the order. Now, of course, American League, the DH, no pitcher hit, but still. That's it. I mean, you know, on pace for 100 RBIs for your second hitter. Yeah, they have three guys that have 70 RBIs or more. One's already cracked the century mark. Yeah, that's JD Martinez. Oh. Folks say that Mookie Betts is a, an MVP candidate. Well, he's going to be battling probably JD Martinez yeah, you, in that category. I wonder if that's going to hurt him, taking votes from each other. One ball, one strike to Ben and He fouls it back. That's a good fastball from Pavetta. Yeah, the thing about pitching against this Red Sox team is you can't go out in the first inning or two and try to feel your way through it and get the feel for your secondary pitch. You better have it from the from the start of the game. Phillies have fared well against the American League opponents. They split uh, one. Uh, they split the two games against Alex Cora's Red Sox up in Boston. But also, Pavetta has pitched well in his short career against the American League. An ERA of 2.97 in 16 early games. And a curveball that misses just a little wide. Two balls, two strikes. Tapper foul. Pitch count's getting up though. After the one out After on the one. first on the one one, one pitch. pitch. For the year, Pavetta averages 50% fastballs and 22% curves. 
And then 17 percent sliders. I think that 2 percent change up has to go up in this game. You think it can go up after not using it that often. I hope it does. Three and two to Benintendi. Another one tap foul. Mitch Moreland's on deck. Fouled away. Well, you're wondering why Red Sox game takes so long. Yeah, they do foul a lot of pitches off. Yeah, they, and you know it's you know you'll get some one pitch out like Nick did with with uh, with Mookie Betts, but you know these guys they grind them out, man. It's swing and a miss. Yeah. He went with one fastball after another and gets his first strikeout of the night. That had some heavy sink on it. Let's take a look at pitch cast presented by PJ Wheelahans. See all the pitches that he has thrown already and where this one winds up. It's a good one there, man. That's you know, you know, you hear that saying throwing downhill. That really was downhill. Because you can't throw uphill. Can't. Not as a pitch. You'd have I mean, a lot of problems. I'm, if you did. I'm assuming it would be a balk every time. To the right side. Yes, indeed. And Cesar will take care of Moreland. So that's a 12 pitch first inning for Nick Pavetta. Red Sox go down in order. Phillies will go to work offensively when we return at the bottom of the first. Nine years and already has 132 wins. He's out warming up. Let's take a look at the lineup he'll face tonight. Brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. Cesar leads it off, and then Nick Williams and his Drupal Cabrera. But this is where the changes are: three, four, and five. Santana drops to five. Hoskins to the cleanup spot. Cabrera moves to the number three hole. Carlos starting tonight, partly because he has such good career numbers against Porcello, which includes three home runs. So a little story about Rick Porcello. When I lived in North Jersey, where he's from, uh, our best friends up there, who we were with every single day playing different sports, coached Rick Porcello in youth leagues oh, and really? summer leagues. And he told me when he got drafted, he said, this kid's going to be a good one. Yeah, out of Seton Hall prep, they had a really good team his senior year, well, obviously, because he was on it. Here's the first pitch to Cesar. And you saw the numbers, you know, he averages 90.3. You just saw that first pitch at 89. He's not going to be much more north of that. He's got a good pace about him. And only two years ago, won 22 games, after, and then last year, obviously, faltering a little bit.
One ball, one strike to Cesar, who was three for ten against the Padres this past weekend. What a two changeup. He's through three pitches, three different pitches. Yeah, they say. You know, you get through the first few innings, first time through the order, you can throw fastballs, mainly fastballs. That was a fastball. <laughs> yeah, but that was a two seam, right? Yeah. Cesar's down looking. All right, so two seam fastball mostly, and then the slider. He does mix it up pretty good. I mean, there's that's not a dominating top number, 31%. No, and you see it already. I mean, he's thrown four pitches already in this. In the four pitches, he's thrown four different ones. Now Nick Williams, who was five for 11 in the series against the Padres, he bounces the first pitch to short. Drubal will now be the hitter five pitches in to the bottom of the first inning. Cabrera three for 11 with a double and an RBI in the Padres series. I keep referencing the Padres series but I think the Phillies would like to just forget about the Padres series. I didn't even know they played them. How quickly I race that one up. That, that, was, that was what the off day was for, just to race it. It was, it was ugly. Out of all the games this year, I think Sunday's game could have been top three ugliest for the Phillies. You know, there were only two errors listed, but there were a lot of other errors that took place. Jake wasn't sharp. Freddie jumps him for a grand slam. Yeah, he battled those first couple innings and got out of it. I mean, really battled. He made some good pitches when he needed to. And then the uh, third inning, when Freddie hit the home run, you know, I think Freddie just saw something that he liked out over the plate. He was ready for it. One and two to Cabrera. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. When that one left the bat, I turned over to the golf. I'm not sure if you were alone in that. No. No, I think I was joined by many in the Philadelphia area. Swing and a miss. So Porcello picks up a couple strikeouts in the first. He throws 10 pitches to get out of it. We've completed one. Both pitchers on top of their game to start the game. We'll head to the second.
Philadelphia. The New York Mets come to town. It begins on Thursday. It's a single admission doubleheader. The first game's at 4.05. Friday is a 6.05 start. Old Dominion postgame concert afterward. And then Saturday at 4.05, all fans, young fans, 14 and under, receive the IBEW Local 98 Jake Arietta nickname T-shirt. Get your tickets by going to phillies.com. Have we gotten any uh, interesting nicknames for the nickname day or whatever uh, it's called? There's some. I mean, around baseball or just for the no, Phillies? No, our guys. I think there we have new, a lot of new guys. Yeah. I mean, uh, Tommy Hunter is bigger feller, is the bigger feller. One guy is big. Who's uh, Camper? Oh, Hoskins is the big fella, and Tommy Hunter is the bigger fella. Obviously, Jake Gary had a snake. Kangaroo's jet packs, right? Scotty I think that's what he packs. is, yes. Um, Austin Davis is Big Fudge from the TV show uh, How I Met Your Mother. That was his nickname in college because he broke a chair one time because he's a little heavier than, than most people on the team. One ball, one strike to J.D. Martinez. And he rips that one past Cabrera. So a leadoff single. It's the first hit of the night for the Red Sox. Yeah, that'll bring Xander Bogarts up. He didn't miss that one. Just thank God he hit it on a line. He got on top of it with that top spin. 109 miles an hour off the bat, we were told. I think the amazing thing about JD Martinez is that he was he was basically cut by the Astros when yeah. he was young with a totally different stance and he went to Detroit and they modified his they adjusted his stance to be more stand up use your length and you know now he's one of the best players in the game. Oh and one took a little while for him to sign this past offseason though. It'd been nice to see him in some Phillies pinstripes wouldn't it. But breaking ball inside, one and one to Bogarts. Bogarts was four for 12 in the Orioles series. He had four ribbies. He has 21, 28 RBIs in his last 30 games played. Bouncing ball foul. Oh, nice job holding oh, the feet, making the play. That was good tarp. Uh, that was a good tarp effort. It's team game, Tom. Team game. Oh, he's going to give the baseball away. Sounds it looks like he's done this before. Nice man, right there. Off the end of the bat remains one and two. Held on to his feet. Got to play that hook from the righty though. That was awfully nice of him. Tom, we're just building bridges here in the city of brotherly love. That's right. Ooh, what Turn a it. snag by Franco. Wow. That is a beautiful Ooh, play. Baby. Five, four, three. Man, he's played some good defense. I know he had the error the other day, but his defense at third has been spectacular recently. Ooh, I mean, that's as good as it gets right there. I mean, Bogart's hit an absolute rocket. Now, you remember Smitty telling us that last weekend? He was here. The short hop. The short hop's e a lot easier to catch than the longer hops. And, and he got that short hop and the ball was hit so hard just the wherewithal get you know nice throw to Cesar got the Bogarts by a lot two outs and it's 0 and 2 Devers was on the DL when we last saw the Red Sox up in Boston Swing and a miss. 
Well, he is just throwing one fastball after another. And in some instances, right on by him. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Patriots with not quite as much on the line. Head over to NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus to catch all the storylines before and after the game. Bookend your birds with our experts all season long right here at NBC Sports Philadelphia. Reese Hoskins will lead it off as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Because of the lineup changes today that the Phillies uh, implemented. A lot of folks were asking Reese, you know, is it any big deal to back cleanup? He said, I don't really care where I hit. I mean, he's hit cleanup for most of his career. He only hit fourth once. That's true. And he's not even hitting fourth now. He's a leadoff hitter. That's a good point. And that's right. People ask me that all the time. Oh, if they moved you from hitting third, would that bother you? No. Well, we were in same picture. We were in Gabe's office today, and he said to he said to us, he said, "Do you think that around baseball?" He goes, "I wasn't conscious of this as a player." He said, "But around baseball in every city, people, you know, wonder about lineup changes and and want to know questions about." It. I said, "Yeah." I said, "I think they do because it's different. Let's say, you know." It's different than the lineup he's had out there the last several weeks. He said, I never really thought about it as a player. He said, I'm just trying to put a lineup together that can get our offense going. Just take it a chance. Yeah. And I, yeah, like I said, I think having switch hitters surrounding Reese. Fly ball left field. That Intendi is over at about five steps from the track. One out. Carlos Santana's coming up. Well, Greg Murphy's off tonight and tomorrow, and Jim Salisbury is standing in for him, and he's out in our authentic fan section. Jimmy? Hello, Murph. Uh, as you guys know, tonight is another one of our authentic fan nights at NBC Sports Philadelphia, and uh, I have come bearing gifts. I have treats for uh, special fans, authentic fans. Cheese steaks? But, uh, not, not quite, but, you know, they might be able to get one down there in the Diamond Club because Andrew and Trey... Get over here. You guys are going down in the Diamond Club. Get out over here. Get over here. Don't mess around. Come on. We got a hustle. <laughs> we got a ball game. <laughs> they might be able to get a cheesesteak down there. I'm sure they can. So that's our authentic fan section. These are, these are our authentic fans that are going to the Diamond Club. You awesome. ever been to the Diamond Club before? Nope. You're going to love it. They have great food down there. Put it on Tom McCarthy's tab, okay? <laughs> You've got it. Okay. Here you go. Here's your two tickets. So, Diamond Club. So, Jimmy, you're, Enjoy it. Jimmy, are you going to escort them down to the Diamond Club? I am not. I think they can find their way. It's right over there. Just just uh, s s smell the cheesesteaks and, and put it on McCarthy's tab, okay? That's right. All right, so Jimmy. All right, guys, go ahead. Jimmy, Get up there. Jimmy, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything like this, but usually Murph has uh, other gifts, other prizes for other folks. I'm going to go two steps down. I, I, Who's actually, that guy? 
Well, these are my other friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many gifts to give out tonight. Season ticket holder, 16 years. Wow. 16 years, 16. tell us your name. Rich Blaha. And your buddy? Gene Levin, good. Uh, do these guys look authentic to you guys? Yeah, they do. He's I mean, got the, the old school Philly shirt logo on. And a Villanova and old school P. You gotta love it. I mean, I, I, I am, I, I am. Want, they I are the sport a little bit, but that's all. They'll love. It. They are radiating authenticity here on Authentic oh, yeah. Fan Night. Yes, they are. And, and guess, guess what their gift is, Tom? What's their gift, Jimmy? They are going to get a great seat up in the broadcast booth with you and Mr. John Cruck. They're gonna spend a few innings up there with you guys. Yeah, and, come on uh, up. I think you guys are serving lobster tails tonight, right? Uh, yeah. Well, that or, or, or buffalo chicken dip. I'm not sure which, what else. Two pretty good choices. Oh, so they're going to have some fun up there. We're going to take a picture. You didn't get the caviar up there? No, no. I didn't. <laughs> these, are great, these are great seats. I might stay up there, up here. They are great Thank seats. You. I'm loving these seats. It's a cool get a breeze up here. The <laughs> rain has passed. It's a beautiful night for a ball game. Well, are you going to bring the guys up here, Jim? I am. We're going to come right now. We're on our way. Uh, right. Clear out a seat for us. Save us a lobster tail. All right, buddy. Okay, pal. Uh, come on, guys. Let's go. Our, here we go. Our tour guide, Jim Salisbury. You think Jimmy's going to be sweating when he comes up here, John? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He, you know, the condition that Murph keeps himself in. Mm -hmm. That's why. Well, Jim's uh, nickname from uh, Larry Anderson is Steak, Salisbury Steak. So, you know, he knows a good steak. So that's why he's he's been talking a lot of food. By why he's gonna sweat. Well, two outs, and here is Mike Franco as uh, Rich and Gene are on their way up here to the booth. Franco, five for twelve in the series against the Padres, is average at 279 with 19 home runs. That one's out to center field. Going back on it is bets. He's going to have room. And the inning is over. So the Phillies go down in order. Six up, six down, 24 pitches, or I should say 23 for Porcello. We'll go to the third in a scoreless game. Time now for the Ram Truck Stuff the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fans section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. John, the question is who hit the last walk off grand slam for the Red Sox before Bogarts did it here in 2018? <sighs> the answer will be revealed in just a little bit. Well, these guys are going to help us, right? Uh, yeah. Look, he's looking it up already. <laughs> it's uh, Rich and Gene walking with uh, Jimmy Salisbury. Jim, I have to stop and take a break. Here's Eduardo Nunez to lead it off, and he takes strike one from Pavetta. Nunez hitting 264 with seven home runs. He's hit it five straight. He has scored a run in five straight. Side two and one. Oh. 
Here we go again with these guys. No. Uh -oh. his, his legs and his arms aren't long enough. Red Sox fans are getting a lot of baseballs down there. Huh? Kind of making out tonight. Now, Tom, like I said, we're just bridge builders here. Make everyone comfortable before we try to beat your little hiney. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That was at 95 miles an hour. Three strikeouts for Pavetta. We had one out here in the third. And Sandy Leon is coming up. I just here it is. Hit it if you can. But you saw it. It was breaking balls away, 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 away. And Nick runs that fastball in on Nunez and kids can't catch up. Pavetta's last start against the Red Sox came in on June 15th last year. He went seven innings, four hits, no runs, two walks, and nine strikeouts. He matched Chris Sale inning for inning. And then Sale gave up a pinch hit RBI double to Ty Kelly. Former Philly great mm -hmm. Ty Kelly. And the Phillies won the game one nothing. Yeah, yeah, we were here. That was a, it was a great game. Great game. You know everything as ad, as advertised with Sale. Yeah, Sale had ten strikeouts. Shocker. About four hits. Came off the DL yesterday with a little what twelve. Uh oh. That ball's hit well. It's deep to right and it is gone. Red Sox take a one nothing lead. Fifth home run of the year for Leon, and it ends in 0 for 11 for him. It was just too good of a pitch. Yeah, you see where Alfaro wanted it away, and Nick knows it. As soon as he threw it, he knew it wasn't where he wanted it. But again, you still have to hit it, and Sandy Leon definitely hit it. Here's Porcello who lines one to deep right center field. It's over the head of Williams. That's going to be a second double of the year. Hey. The first slide into second. Represent North Jersey. I bet Alex Cora, Dave Dombrowski were like, why does go? No. Damaged fingers doing that, Rick. Well, the last time he. he he it was the the pitcher in a National League game on the road. He had a three run double against Max Scherzer in the Nationals. And that helped the the Red Sox to a victory and they were struggling at that point. The race had tightened in the American League East with the Yankees. They had dropped two of three from the Yankees. Looks like he knew what he was doing there though. He's in the cage today taking batting practice underneath. That's popped out to first his first time up. There's a slider and it's over two. Get feisty huh. Let's go Red Sox chant breaks out. And the Philly faithful drown him out with the booze. Swing and it's one and two. Might be the best bowler playing baseball right now. Who's that, Rick Porcello? Oh, Mookie Betts. Mookie. Yeah. Got a handful of 300. Double games. digits, I believe, in 300 game. Every era seems to have him. Tom Candiotti at one point was the best bowler in baseball and a member of the Bowling Hall of Fame. John Burkett pitched for the Giants was a really good bowler. No swing says the first base umpire Kerwin Danley. Two and two. Yeah, the dirt. 
dirt three balls and two strikes. Benintendi is on deck. And ball four. First walk issued by Pavetta. This is an at bat that worries me, T Mac. Benintendi's. Yeah, I know Nick struck him out last time with fastballs, but if he throws a fastball here early in this county, better make it a good one. Yeah, Benintendi did strike out, but it was a 10 pitch at bat where he had six foul balls. Breaking ball 0 and 1. Starts him off with a slider. Ben Intendi 356 with runners in scoring position. It's one of the best numbers in all of baseball. Good spot for that 96 mile an hour nice. fastball. Almost unhittable. Pitch gas presented by PJ Wheelahans. That's why it's unhittable. <laughs> huh? Yeah, it might have been a little off the plate. Curveball tops. Ball, another foul ball. I mean, do they do you just give Alex Cora the manager of the year? He, he's, I mean, he has had a lot of things go right for him this oh. year. Although Bob Melvin might put his hat in the ring for that one too. You know. Yeah. And uh, who's in Seattle? Scott Service? Yeah. Well, he's gonna have another long at bat. He had a ten pitch at bat his first time. This will at least be seven. I think I'd try to throw that fastball down and away again, see if he can get another call out there. Try to backdoor him with a, another breaking pitch, and it's two at two. Ball as it pops in and out of the glove of Alfaro.
Two balls, two strikes. Up high, three and two. Right, here's the issue. What do you throw here? Because if he walks him, if Moreland doesn't hit no double play, now you got to face J.D. Martinez. I think you got to challenge him. I think you have to challenge him, challenge him down and away. Throws him a curve ball out towards second. Cesar's got it. That nice flip to Cabrera, and that's the second double play of the night. And that was pretty helpful for Nick Pavetta. The Red Sox do strike first. They get a home run from Sande Leon. They leave one. We'll head to the bottom of the third. One nothing Red Sox. Lottery's latest scratch off neon. Players must be 18 or older. Please play responsibly and buy Nissan. Shop choose Nissan.com. Philly's down 1 nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Uh oh, Johnny, the oh, doorbell's ringing. There we go. Oh, boy. Jimmy, Come on in. Jimmy's bringing the boys in. It's Rich and Gene. Gene's in the front. Rich and Gene. There they Thomas. are. Jimmy, come on in. Tom, I have some. Hey, Gene, how are you? Tom McCarthy, John Crook. How you doing? Hey, Rich. How are you, how man? Are you? How you doing? How are you? All right. You too. Rich, you're tall. How tall are you? Yeah. That's tall. why I'm not standing yeah. up. <laughs> Here, I'm a, I'm Rich, you're wait. in charge of the microphone. Keep I'm gonna it close. Wait for him to, I'm gonna wait for him to leave before I stand up. All right. So, so Rich, you said 16 year season ticket holder. Is that what you said? You're a 16 year season ticket holder. 16 years season ticket holder. Uh, 33 years a fan. When I moved from Ohio. Oh boy. Love the Phillies. Love the Phillies and you love, love Villanova. Love, love Villanova as well. Oh, yeah. Did you go to any of the Villanova games this year? Went to the championship this year. Nice. In San Antonio. Oh, good so for awesome. you. Awesome. So um, where do you usually sit when you're here? I mean, I know you're in the authentic fan section. Where do you usually sit? Um, my uh, girlfriend and I, our seats are at uh, 374 uh, foot marker there. Oh, right by, by WB Mason. Who sign? WB Mason, yeah. Right, good. Yeah, I've had those uh, 16 years. Does Gene tag along with you, or does he have tickets also? He does. He does. Yeah. When she can't make it, my friend goes. <laughs> All right, good. Cool. Not not quite the trade-off you're looking for, is it? Pardon me? It's not quite the trade-off you're looking for, is it? Uh, no, but but this is a great trade. It's a great trade-off nonetheless. Yeah. Appreciate it. What do you think of our booth? Uh, it's great. It's a little more Spartan than I thought it would be, but it's functional. Well, but here's the thing. I mean, we have the, the, the backdrop here. That makes it a little smaller. It but does. the booth is is much bigger, like yes. the whole booth is yes. way back. Yeah, but it's a nice backdrop. Yeah, thank nice you. view, it's a great view. Yeah. So uh, how often you get a, a foul ball up here? We have only had one. One. We haven't had any this year, have None we? None this year. Yeah. So we've had one. Yeah. Sarge caught it off the wall one time. He saved Wheels' his life. He did. No, Sarge did. No, I I can't catch anymore. <laughs> oh, Duval hits a if foul. It, if it comes up here to where you're just gonna hit me in the face. Yeah. Uh, ben, yeah, ben, ben. Well, there was one that was down here, but I don't think that it wasn't close enough for Ben to catch. Ben's got rock hands; he couldn't catch it. 
no finesse. Yeah, catcher, he was catcher. a catcher, wasn't he? He was yeah, a catcher, yeah. But he would think he would have better hands. Yeah, you think he would. You'd think he but, would, wouldn't But you? first baseman have the best hands. Well, that's that's why they don't hit any up here. I don't they <laughs> I don't want to embarrass these guys with snagging one without a glove. I stood up because I realized that Rich and G don't have headphones on, so we're talking, we can hear each other. They probably can't hear us as as clearly. Yeah. I can hear you just fine. All right, good. I'm gonna let my uh, teammate here. Yeah. All right, so Gene, how long have you been a Phillies fan? Oh, 60 years, probably. 60 <laughs> no, years. 50 years. All right. Yeah, I, I take, grew up in Boyertown. Boyertown Bears. There, so you, you know, it's a, yeah. A, a good community for. Sure is. For, for playing baseball, we we uh, enjoy coming down. My. Hey. Wife and I watch every game pretty much every night. Oh, uh, Whoa, did you see that oh. one right there? Yep. Devers nearly ran into the lady who was trying to get out of the way. Oh, she ducked just, and the ball almost yeah. hit her, too. Good boy. Chivalry. Yeah. <laughs> one and two to O'Double. Phillies down one nothing. They're in the bottom of the third. In the dirt so, two and two. So y'all are Phillies fans. Yeah. Did you think on this date? That the Phillies would still be in a pennant race? Not in the beginning of the year. Not at the beginning of the year, but I, now I still believe they would. I do too. I, I still think they have a good chance. Uh, I do too. Well, you money. can rush those starters out there. You always got a chance, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, look at the rest of the division. I mean, Mets, uh, Marlins, Nationals. <laughs> they're, oh, Gene, oh, okay. if you're going to be our reporter, they're, you have yeah, to move the yeah, mic around. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're in different phases. I know what you're thinking. Jim Salisbury can do it to anyone, can, but, you know. But, I, I mean, it's just us and the Braves. So, you know, if we can keep our starting pitching going yeah, and I, get some timely hitting. That's the issue. Yeah. The offense has to be more consistent down the stretch. You're absolutely right. The bouncer out to second base, and uh, Nunez is up with it. And the defense. Yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. For for a team who's average or below average defensively, and who at times struggles to score runs, to still be in contention in mid-August, it's incredible. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they did a great job the first two times they played. It's good thing John's here. <laughs> I would have liked to see him win the first game. Yeah, you're right. The second game they. They, they dominate. Well, that game and the, and the first game on the road trip against Arizona, yeah. but nice if they won that one. Might have changed the way the road trip yeah. went. So. All right, so all the years you guys have been fans, um, favorite player for both of you, and was there a favorite team that you had over the years? What's your favorite player, Gene, over the years? I have to go way back to Richie Allen. All right. He was <laughs> just right, here last I, week. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It's You're from Ohio. You, you know who you got to pick, right? Uh, the greatest player in Philly's history from Ohio. Played third base. Oh, Mike Schmidt. Yeah. You know what? I got a soft spot for Roy Holiday. Oh, okay. And that's gonna. I can understand that. Uh, you know what he did for the team and. Were you guys here last week at the ceremony? Were you? Did, I, I'm sure you watched some of the highlights of it. Watched the highlights. We were away at a, a my nephew's wedding in Buffalo. Okay. So uh, wow. I would have loved to have been down here, but that's <laughs> that's what the recorder's for. So it was great. It was great. Yep. All right. What about Thank a you. What about team? What you, what was your favorite team over the years? I like the '93 Phillies. I mean, that a boy Johnny. That, those go. Those guys were. The, my my best memory was when Danny Jackson would rip his jersey <laughs> yeah. at the end of the game and do the the Hulk the Hulk move. I mean. How about you? Yeah, he was. I, I like the 09 team because I thought they could repeat, and, and I had all the players, the pitchers were all in place, and, and it was a great. I mean, they, they ha had probably the most wins. That it was what, a great team. Two or something like that. Uh, on paper, it was probably better than the 018 yeah, that went on to win the championship. Well, they, they had would deeper have starting right. pitchers, Correct. right? Yes. Cliff Lee was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had all the, the pitchers. Hamels, yep. Lee. It was a, it was a good team. I mean, obviously losing to the Yankees. You yeah, know. that's no embarrassment. Yeah, they just they needed one more starting pitcher yeah. that year. Yes. One more starting pitcher. That's a Pedro. Pedro, Pedro pitched Pedro. that last game, and he just wasn't yeah, the same. He, no. he wasn't you know, he wasn't the same as he was during the season. Nick Pavetta's up with two outs. I mean, that 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 well, staff that team was, was that was stacked. There's pictures all over the wall out here, not here, but out in the hallway. Um, of that team and that rotation. That, that rotation was incredible. He's incredible. starting to get the hang of this microphone thing. I know. Yeah, I know. So a little pass. It's like a relay race. Just <laughs> pass it off. 
took 61 years, but hey. <laughs> hey, listen, enjoy the rest of the game. Thanks for coming yeah. up. Appreciate it so much. Thank yeah, you, guys. You, guys. Thank yeah, you guys. Thank you guys. That's uh, Rich right. and Gene. They're right, our authentic fan winners, or a couple of them anyway. Gene, see you soon, all right? We'll head on to the top of the fourth here in Philadelphia. power of Duracell batteries delivered right to your desktop the same day when you order by 1130 pinpoint delivery by who who but WB Mason top of the fourth inning now the Phillies trail at one nothing well through three innings it's a pretty good pitchers duel I mean I know Nick gave up the home run in the third but he's made some pitches he's gotten a couple double play balls which have helped his cause Porcello striking a lot of guys out in three innings. What did Pavetta do? Like, did Pavetta strike out? Yeah. Five strikeouts for Porcello through three. Pavetta has three and a double play ball. Moreland pops it up. I don't think Mike Hell sees it. He doesn't see it. Now he does. Wow. All right, Johnny. What's that feeling like? A educated guess on where it's coming down and then. The worst feeling in the world of thinking, oh boy, where's this going to hit me? I mean, it, it, it it's the loneliest feeling because you know there's no one going to even come close to calling you off on this one, unless it's the third base coach. But you just, I mean, you have to just stay with it and hope on its way down that you can find it. And and as it as you find it, that it. It's not too far away from you, so you can catch it. First pitch to JD Martinez is in there for strike. Outside quarter, 0 and 2. Blocked by Alfaro. Swing and a miss. Got another strike out of high fastball. That's four for Pavetta. Well, the Phillies made some roster moves earlier today. Hector Neris has been uh, recalled from Lehigh Valley, 18 of 19 scoreless outings. J.P. Crawford has been optioned to the Iron Pigs, so he'll get a chance to play play down there for a couple weeks. Pedro Florimone is on a rehab assignment, tr is transferred to Clearwater. That's a great sign. And Jake Thompson was traded to the Milwaukee Brewers today. He had been designated for assignment and then claimed by the Brewers, so the Phillies uh, sent him 
to Milwaukee for some cash considerations. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, I hope Jake gets a chance in Milwaukee. Yeah, and he's you know he's on a team that's in a pennant race too. It's not a bad thing. Now, the J.P. Crawford move though, that's just to get him some at bats because he's been Absolutely. hurt. Absolutely. Off the glove of Franco. It's unfortunate. He made a fantastic play the last time Bogarts was up. Yeah, and that uh, about you know we talked about it. Like Schmidt, he said the short hop's easier to play than those. Long hops. This thing had a lot of top spin on it. See how that thing just bounces up on Franco and didn't follow it in. No ruling yet on this one. E5. E5. So that is the 11th error of the year for Franco. Here's Devers. Got a curve outside. The curve. One ball, two strikes. Devers struck out his last time up. He struck out on a curve or on a fastball. We'll see if they throw him another one here. Swing and a miss. Pitch. Beautiful pitch. A curveball. That is the fifth strikeout for Nick Pavetta through four innings. No runs, no hits. One error, one man left. And Nick's got some good stuff here tonight. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's the Red Sox one and the Phillies nothing. You buy your local Chevrolet dealers and buy WB Mason. Who bought WB Mason for fast free delivery? Nobody does it better. Out of the yard, some of the kids taking some hacks. You got to get it started a little earlier. A little bit. Yep, a little bit. 
Well we expected that there would be a lot of Red Sox fans here for this series just as there were a lot of Phillies fans up in Boston when the Phillies were up in Fenway Park. So that's why you're hearing the the back and forth between the two fan bases. Well, that's one thing about the Red Sox Yankees Phillies they travel well. Yes Cubs. We'll hear we'll see a lot of Cubs yeah. fans here at the end of August. Cesar breaks his bat. And Porcello has faced 10. He's retired the first 10. No hits, no walks, no base runners for the Phils. He's got more hits than we do. Yeah, that is true. Climbing wall. Santa's here. What? Yeah, right there, Santa Claus. Yeah, he is. Huh. Christmas in August. I don't know if that's the real one though. That one may smell like beef and cheese. And the problem with that is. <laughs> Williams grounded out to short his first time up. One ball, one strike. One and two. Side two and two. On the out of town scoreboard, they've moved to the bottom of the second inning. And the Braves lead the Marlins 2 0. Ronald Acuna has hit another home run. Lead off? Five straight games. Wow. I don't know if that rookie of the year race, I know the Giants keep saying that Derek Rodriguez. Has a chance for it. I don't know if anybody has a chance for it this year, except for Acuna. It'd be hard pressed to beat that young man. Swing and a miss. That's six strikeouts for Porcello. Two outs here in the fourth. Washington is in St. Louis tonight. We'll keep an eye on that one. They'll be here in Philadelphia starting Monday, August 27th. They'll play a three-game series. All three are at 7:05. You can purchase tickets by going to Phillies.com. As Drupal Cabrera struck out his first time up. Cunha, by the way, is the youngest player in baseball history to homer in five consecutive games. He's homered it to lead off a game, three straight games. So five overall, three straight. And he's homered in seven of his last eight. Yeah, both games of the doubleheader yesterday, right? Yes. Those games weren't even close. Just as. Porcello Porcello is not making anything close here tonight. He has seven strikeouts through four innings. He hasn't allowed a hit. He has faced the minimum. We head to the fifth.
Fan night is sold out, and here are some of the folks that took advantage of discounted tickets and a free Phillies hat. Don't miss out on the last authentic fan night of the year, September 18th versus the Mets. Go to phillies.com slash authentic fan right now. We got a chance to meet a couple of the authentic fans tonight. Rich and Gene, Rich Blaha and Gene, who spent some time up here in the booth. Hope they get back okay. Eduardo Nunez with a swing and a miss to start this fifth inning. Fly ball to shallow left field. And Reese comes wandering in to put it away. One out here at the top of the fifth. So far, Nick's been really good. He's been really good. He made the one mistake to this guy coming up right here. Yeah, and that's, you know, when your offense is scuffling, you hate to say that one mistake could beat you. You know, they say solo home runs don't beat you, but if you ain't scoring runs, it can. And the way Porcello's pitching. Well, I wonder sometimes if that creeps into the head of a starting pitcher when your team is struggling like that. You know, if after allowing the home run, I'm sure Nick had to calm himself down a little bit, but even in the back of his mind thinking, oh no, I can't give up anymore. Yeah, you know, you know, everyone talks about these high leverage, high stress pitches. Like the way the Phillies offense is going now, every pitch is a high stress pitch. Here's the Leon home run his last time up. And yeah, Nick just pulled a fastball. Farrell wanted it away. It, it Nick pulls it down and in, and you know, it's redundant to keep saying it down and into a lefty's a danger zone, and Sandy Leon proved it again. That's our giant home run replay. Let's hope the next time we do it, it'll be one of our guys. Ground ball to the right side. Take a look at that home run. Statcast AI powered by AWS. 101.6, 33 degrees, 384 feet. Okay. He hit it hard, he hit it high, and he hit it. Hit it long. Hmm. Well, now Porcello, who doubled his last time. Hey, Johnny, I forgot all about. I'm looking over the stats here. I forgot all about Juan Soto from the Nationals. So it's going to be a yeah. two, two horse race for the uh, rookie of the year. How did I forget about Juan Soto? Because we haven't played him in a while. Well, that could be it. I mean, his opposite field home run last night. I mean, he's he's 19. Acuna is 20. It's just. It's amazing. Ooh, good pitch. One and two. Yeah, Soto 301, 15 home runs, 43 RBIs. Yeah, it's a two horse race. That one's just a bit low, I guess. And now a strikeout for Pavetta. Six strikeouts. He's allowed just one run through five. We head to the bottom of the fifth. The Phil's looking for their first hit.
I know the report, Citizens Bank, the official bank of the Phils. Visit citizensbank.com. Connor Brogdon was the uh, pitcher of the week. Represents the Blue Claws. Five innings, seven strikeouts. Mickey Moniak, the player of the week. Eight games, a 400 batting average, and OPS over 1,000. That's good to see. A couple other things happening in the minor leagues. Lehigh Valley and Dorham tied at three. Zach Green, a three-run home run. Hartford and Redding are tied at one. Ryan Howard was inducted into the uh, Reading Hall of Fame tonight. He had 37 home runs when he was with Reading. Congratulations to Ryan. That's pretty sweet that uh, he was inducted into this evening's uh, into the Hall of Fame this evening. And Clearwater shutting out Bradenton for nothing. Florimone playing second base. He has walked and scored a run. Jared Eikhoff went four innings. One hit, no earned runs, struck out four. Also, congratulations go out to uh, Reading Fightins athletic trainer Mickey Kozak. He was named the 2018 uh, MILB Athletic Trainer of the Year for the Eastern League. So, congratulations to Mickey. He's a super guy. Here's Hoskins. The Phillies are being no hit through four. And he leads off the fifth inning with the Phillies down one nothing. Now let's hope that brings bad luck. Not that we wish bad luck on anyone, but. Yeah, let him throw a no hitter against somebody. It's going to be tough to score if we don't get a hit, Tom. That's right. Check swing. Pretty deep. Ben Intendi going back, and this game is tied. Ben A. First hit, first run. It's a 1 1 ball game. Now he just missed one his first at bat, flying out to left field. And you talk about a guy who needed something to get going right. Now we talked about it in the open. His home numbers are unbelievable. And hopefully that gets him jump started for the remainder of this series and then against the Mets. We look at that. Just stayed on that ball so well. No, no pull off whatsoever. Nice easy swing. That looked like one of his home run derby swings. How yeah. easy he swung with you know how big he is and strong he is. He gets great carry and that a boy Reese. Well he had been one for 27 coming into that at bat. Ball one strike. That ball actually traveled an estimated 405 feet to left field. Carlos Santana provided us with our Geico quote of the day on his struggles. I know I'm struggling a little bit, but I'm keeping my mind strong. I'm fighting. I play hard every day. I have a month and a half. Month and a half, and mentally, I will try to finish strong and try to help my team. Good I mean, time is any to start right now. Yeah, his on base percentage is what it normally is it's 350. He's probably going to get close to his RBI total, his average RBI total. It's just his batting average is so low compared to other years. He hits that ball hard, but is retired. Franco he fly to center field.
Par Par Parcello still hasn't pitched from the stretch, has he? He is not. <laughs> That's a good point. What was going on in San Diego with all the step outs and the who was pitching for us then? Well, from their standpoint, they had so many young pitchers. Uh, that there oh, were times how far it was hitting, I think, and there was a lot of stepping out, and yeah, calling I, time. And I think a lot of it. They had they had three young pitchers oh. going. Up foul three and two. the right side Moreland has it two outs enhance your next game day experience with the MLB ballpark app access and manage your tickets enjoy check in offers exclusive content and much more download the MLB ballpark app today. Goes retired. They're giving uh, Porcello a little extra time. I guess he had a run over to first. It uh, was at 45 feet. He stumbled a little bit just as he went to the bag. Uh, a little. Oh, he almost uh, turned it. Didn't affect his balance on that pitch. By the way, we mentioned the ballpark app. Phillies Charities is hosting an auction with, on the ballpark app from the 13th to the 21st. And it will feature over 40 player and coach signed caps and jerseys. So fans holding tickets to tonight's game and the 18th can view the items at the first base gate. And all fans are invited to participate by bidding on the MLB.com ballpark app from the 13th of August to the 21st, beginning at noon. So if you're here, this homestand, you can take a peek at the items. Odubel pulls it to the right side. That's a base hit. And now Porcello will have to work from the stretch for the first time. Well, let's see if Jorge can take advantage of this one. That's the swing you like to see from him. The helmet ain't falling off. Is like you said, these guys are so strong. If, if they sometimes it's so hard to get it, get get people to understand it. You don't have to swing 100% to hit it out of the ballpark. Uh, and I think this guy hitting right here. Hopefully he learns that soon. You know, yeah, 500 foot homers are great, but you know. 380 over the fence is as good. How about Justin Bohr is out of the on deck circle to pinch hit? This could be one of those for trying to get Jorge a fastball. Yeah, they've got Tommy Hunter, the Phillies do loosening up in the bullpen. There it was. He got a fastball. Phillies did add the extra pitcher to the bullpen. Maybe that was part of the theory is that if they needed to get a bat early. Although the bet has been dominant. That was a hanger. JT Real Muto has tied up the game down in Atlanta with a two run home run. So the Marlins and the Braves evened up at two. Your new favorite player. That's right. Marlins did, really didn't do anything against the Braves yesterday. Two runs combined.
Gore gotten in a bat yet? He is one for one. Yesterday? Yeah, he pinch hit on Sunday. Or Sunday, I mean. Well, Dubal goes, pitches bounce back to the box. One three of the put out. Reese Hoskins, though, has tied this ball game up for the Bills. His 23rd home run of the year. Well, over 400 feet. Philly's got their first two hits of the game. We'll head to the sixth, all square at one. Fearless Phillies of the week are now eternal fixtures in the team's history. Roy Halladay came and left the Phillies family way too soon, but not without leaving us with lasting memories of his incredible abilities and determination on and off the field. Pat Gillick joined the Phillies in 2005 and helped guide an organization on the rise to the highest peak of baseball in 2008. The highest level of respect for two men who now reside forever on the Phillies Wall of Fame. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, obviously that fan should not be on the field and the Fanatic is uh, directing Iggy to take care of that fan. <laughs> Needless to say the fan is no longer on the field. No. All right, so big spot now for Pavetta in a 1 1 game. He's facing the Red Sox top of the order. Mookie Betts. Betts is 0 for 1. He walked his last time. Or two. Away for Bet. And Williams is there. What a way. Runs for Radiothon. For every run the Phillies scored during the month of August, the Phillies will make a contribution to the Help Our Kids Radiothon, benefiting Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children. To find out more, visit Nemours.org slash Radiothon. All right, so Benintendi has kind of been the nemesis for Pavetta and his pitch count. He has seen 20 pitches so far tonight. 21, and it's a strike. He's fouled 10 pitches off. He has nothing to show for it except they were long at bats. Strike out in a double play. Hopefully, this one doesn't go up to 10 pitches. Ground or 11 foul balls, I should say.
get no two and he still looks like he's going to work a lengthy at bat. Line drive caught by Santana two outs. And now Mitch Moreland. Ball was drilled right at Carlos. Yes, it was. Good positioning. <laughs> yeah, I mean they. It would have been a strike if he was a catcher. Just off the outer edge. How about the Red Sox? They're on pace to win more than 100 games, as we talked about. It surprised me when I saw that they only have had three 100 win seasons in their history. Really? Is that amazing? I would have thought that 2004 through the 2007 yeah. teams would have. But they do play in a tough division. Oh, yeah, gosh, yes. They're kind of making a mockery out of the division right now. Yeah, I mean, you're, you got a third place team. It's two games over 500, and they're 24 games out. Right center field. It's pretty well hit. Odubel's going back. He's toward the fence. He's there, and he puts it away. Couple steps left. Another one, two, three inning for Pavetta. He hasn't allowed a hit since the third. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Nick Pavetta is done for the night, John, but I'll tell you, he was refreshing all night long. Hey, yeah, sure was. He made the one mistake to San Leone. He got some great help right there by Mikel Franco on that double play ball off the bat of Xander Bogart. But other than that, the fastball has been popping for Nick Pavetta. And when he needed an out, he got a couple few double play balls, but that's the pitch right there. That high fastball. His fastball was electric, and that's our course light refreshing finish. And about what we've been doing here against the Red Sox this season. I mean, you know, the best offense in all of baseball by a lot. And the Phillies pitching has held it down. Roman Quinn loops one out toward left center field. Benintendi's going to run it down. So he's batting for Pavetta, who goes six innings, allows three hits and one run. He's out not because of his pitch count or anything like that. He has 84 pitches, but I think Gabe likes his bullpen and felt like he needed a little offense so that's why he put Roman in to lead it off. Had a day off yesterday everybody's rested and yeah. ready to go. And you know Roman gets on the speed. Just take it a chance. But just a really nice job by Nick Pavetta and his last three outings have been excellent. And men do the Phillies need that.
know, what do you think pitchers think when they start going over there in their mind how we're going to pitch to these guys? And you got bets. Mm. You know, came in the game hitting what almost three, hitting 350. You got JD Martinez, who might be the best player in the American League right now. Like, you know. It's a it's a formidable team. Yeah, it is. There's our authentic fans who got moved. Yeah, Trey and AJ got moved down to the Diamond Club, so they're getting a chance to enjoy some pretty sweet seats. Pretty cool. I mean, young kids that probably never sat there before. Can you imagine the trouble we could get in sitting down there? Don't they get food and everything? Well, there's going to be a tab that you can. Yeah, it'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Just keep bringing it. I think so. We'll bring a six of everything until we feel like we're going <laughs> to get sick, and then just stop and bring two of everything. That's a foul ball. Some folks enjoying the Diamond Club and the fair. Way outside. Marcelo looks like an American Legion player out there. Uniform all dirty. He's out of the mound. He has a double tonight. A lot of times your best player in high school and Legion, they were your best hitter and your best pitcher. So that's the way your uniform would look by the time the game was almost over. Of the curveball. Nine strikeouts tonight for Porcello, who's allowed one run and two hits through six. We'll head to the seventh inning, all tied up the Red Sox and the Phillies. Now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. Well, the Phillies uh, were being no hit until the fifth inning. That's when Reese Hoskins stepped to the plate and blasted his 23rd home run of the year, a solo shot. They have two hits because Odubel had one later on in the inning. Rick Porcello has been excellent. Nick Pavetta was excellent, and now he is done. As the Phillies go to the bullpen here in the top of the seventh inning and bring out Pat Neshek. Nishak uh, has has not worked a whole lot over the last uh, several games 
In fact, I asked Gabe today about using him in San Diego when the Phillies had cut the lead in half to 6 3. And he said, you know, that's a fair question. He said, but I felt like Austin Davis, and, and this is very true. Austin Davis had gotten some big outs for us all year, and I really thought he would be able to keep it in a 6 3 game. He said it was, you know, just a roll of the dice because I felt confident in him. He said, but they did think about putting Nishak in the other day, and then obviously the Padres added to their run total. Side. It's J.D. Martinez is one for two. Phillies have three infielders on the left side. Ouch. <laughs> that could have hurt someone. All right, I haven't even been thinking about the trivia question. Oh, the last uh, yeah. Grand Slam walk, walk off. off. Swing and a miss. Martinez strikes out for the second time tonight. Phillies so baseball is brought to you by your local Ford store. Check out every new Ford car, truck, and SUV crossover at buyfordnow.com today. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Car insurance. So we got a miss by Bogarts. Well, here's the thing. I will say that you that you know this player. You don't think of him as a Red Sox player. Although I think he grew up a Red Sox fan. I think I know. Oh yeah. All right, I'm not going to give you any more hints yet. I'm going to write down what I think. You are correct. 0 2 pitch. Check swing. No, he did not go. No, the body got out in front. But the bat stayed back. I think you could jam him right here. He's, you He's start leading with your body like that. Out toward right center field. Williams is there. Two outs. Well, we mentioned the, the run of games the Phillies have coming up. That includes the Cubs at the end of August and the beginning of September. Three games over the weekend. Boy, those crowds are going to be thick. You want to get your tickets right now. August 31st, 705. Saturday, the 1st of September is 705. No more's Childhood Cancer Awareness Night. Sunday the second is the backpack cooler courtesy uh, of Fanti's plumbing heating and air free to children 14 and under go to Phillies.com for your tickets there's the backpack cooler. Two and oh. By the way, how good have these three games been between these two teams? Yes. Not a lot of offense for either team, really. Uh, I mean, but that's kind of become the Phillies' mo, right? Yeah, at least starting pitching. At least for well, starting pitching, I think, has carried them all year. Yes. Along with the bullpen. Arietta and Nola were so good last time. Oh man. PJ Wheelahans sponsors our pitch cast. 
Well, it was a strike earlier tonight. They've had a Martinez had a couple good hags. Deaver right there with a pretty good swing at a Nishak offering. Just a bit outside. I don't know how you don't swing at that. It looks like a strike from up here, but they're out. Look at that. That's <laughs> a great reaction. What are you looking at? That's a great reaction. And the boo. Then he looks around. Is anyone else joining me with these boots? <laughs> Nunez opposite way right at Nick Williams. And the bullpen stepping up again. Pat Nishak, a scoreless inning out of the pen. Time to stretch in a heck of a game. Cabrera lead it off when we come back. The last walk off Grand Slam for the Red Sox before Xander Bogarts in 2018. Former Philly great. That's right. Rico Baronia. Man, can he pick it at first base? Yes, he could. Rico is correct. It was back in 2000 against Tampa Bay. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of the Phillies prize pack. I'll tell you, Pat Nishak has been into every pitch he has thrown. I mean, he is dancing all over the place and celebrating and signaling. It's very entertaining to watch. Kind of goes along with his motion. A little hyper, isn't it? A little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, Cabrera, who is 0 for 2, he has struck out twice, leads it off here in the bottom of the seventh. Porcello pitch count is still oh, in a pretty good man. spot. Did he call that a strike? He did call that a strike. Oh my! I mean, it looked like the two knee set through and up. And now you got to swing at it. Wow! We 
Reese Hoskins coming up, and it's time for Built for Baseball, brought to you by T Mobile. Built to take a breaking ball out over the plate and hook it into the left field bleachers to tie this game up. And that was our T Mobile. Built, built for, for baseball. baseball. This man is built to hit, though. Really fun to watch when he when he gets it rolling. Hopefully he can keep it rolling here against Porcello. Side quarter two and one. It's not where Leon wanted it. Opposite way, and right at JD Martinez. Phillies have had a hit in just one inning tonight. They had two in the fifth, the home run and the single by O'Double. That's it, John. That's it. But they've only got three hits. That is true. So bottom line is it's one to one here. You've got a chance, especially playing at home. Carlos hit the ball hard his last at bat. He was trying to hit it hard there. Keith Embry is warming up with the bullpen. Get one pitch to hit in every at bat. Might have been the one. Rick Porcello, 132 wins, 104 losses. Just 29 years old. This was supposed to be Brian Johnson's night to pitch. But Porcello's happy that it's his night. That's 10 strikeouts for Porcello. He may be done. He's due to bat second. Five career 10 strikeout games as we go to the eighth.
Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer. Visit DelValHondaDealers.com. And by Jefferson Health. Call 800 Jeff now or visit JeffersonHealth.org. Phillies, the Red Sox tied up at one as we go to the top of the eighth inning here in Philadelphia. All right, so you're at a turning point. Well, it's Rick Porcello and how good he's been tonight for the Red Sox. Yeah, he's been really good. Nick Pavetta equally as good, only giving up one run each, but Porcello with the 10 strikeouts, you know, he doesn't throw anything straight, two seamer, four seamer. The breaking ball was really a, a weapon for him today in this game. Got a strikeouts with that breaking ball. There he gets Nick Williams. Looks like a change up there to Carlos to strike him out the end of the seventh inning. And Rick Porcello has been our Toyota turning point of the game and getting handshakes. And you never want to kind of get into anyone's bullpen late in the game, but you want to get him out of there. Absolutely. He's due up second. There is a pinch hitter, Rock Holt, out of the on deck circle. Sandy Leone leads it off against Tommy Hunter in for Pat Neshek. And a cutter in, 1 0. Tommy 3.89 earned run average 44 innings 36 strikeouts popped him up Santana in foul territory he has room and then runs out of room as he bends over the railing nice effort Boy, I thought that ball was going to come back and stay oh, in kid. Thing the camera was there, he could grab onto it and stay in play. Ball bounced right next to uh, Artie Coleman, one of the camera operators down there. Rich, our camera operator, had a nice shot of him going over. And a strike three call. Had to pause a little bit for Will Little getting into it. Let's take a look. Absolutely. That's the same pitch he hit for the home run. Well, now Brock Holt. That was a good pitch. Yes, it was. Took it with two strikes. Called off the bench is just giving the Red Sox the lead. Off the facing of the auxiliary scoreboard. That guy's happy because now he's the pitcher of record on the winning side, Rick Porcello. Two to one, Boston. Wow, you want to talk about turning on a pitch? Quick to that one and hit it off the facing of the second deck up there. I mean that's that's big boy territory for a guy like Brock Holt. 424 feet estimated 105 miles an hour. That's a foul ball. It's one and one. That's his eighth hit against the Phillies in a very short period of time. Maybe he might want to sign with the National League East, yeah. huh? Well, it's two to one here in the top of the eighth inning. Out to left center field. 
Reese on the run. He's not going to get there. In fact, Oduble will play it off the wall. 35 doubles now for Mookie Betts. Now here's the Tommy Hunter. You got to keep this at a one run game. Uh, you, you, you know what's lurking down there in the bullpen. Just said Alfaro go out and talk yeah. to him because they've got Aaron Luke warming up in the bullpen. I think they're trying to decide whether they want to bring the lefty into the game or not. So he's acquired Luke when they were in Boston. Well, Kimball down there in the bullpen. They're, they're not a lot of runs he gives up. No. Oh, this that's the thing too you're you're down by one you got to keep it there and there's Kimball he's had some pretty entertaining games against the Phillies yeah. over the years when he was in the East yeah but you know you you know if you don't tie this thing up in the eighth or take a lead in the eighth you know your chances are very slim of winning the game off the hands out to left right at Hoskins that was a good pitch by Tommy Hunter Two outs and Mitch Moreland's coming up. Takes on oh, off the inside corner. I don't know. J.D. Martinez might have struck out twice today, but you don't want to see him up in this inning. No. It's a big pitch right here to Moreland. Two and one. This might be a little painful, John. Ouch. I mean, at some point. <laughs> Don't they have to start making those things to go up higher? They might. I mean, you can't. That's the thing. You, you, you can't put it over the knee. No. You, the I, hard plastic. But I, you know, I, I would think if I hit one off my knee once or twice, I would wear a knee pad or something, like a the, thicker yeah, knee underneath. pad than, you know, they wear those little neoprene ones for sliding. Swing and miss to a two. Four D replay available to us tonight. That's sweet. Not that he was that was painful, but we got to back it up a look at it. Runner goes from second, pitch outside, stolen base for Betts. Twenty-four steals. Well, that was because of the shift. Franco has to play off. That's smart not to even think about throwing it. Two outs. He's going to score on a base hit anyway. Fly ball toward the left field line. It's not deep. Hoskins is there. And the inning is over. However, the Red Sox retake the lead. Brock Holtz pinch hit home run. Here in the top of the eighth inning, Rick Porcello is done, but he's on the winning side right now.
to you by University of Maryland University College. Robinson Cano has been reinstated today. He's not going to play second base for Seattle. He's going to play a little first base, going to play a little third base. Might DH as well. He is not eligible for the postseason, so D. Gordon is going to stay at second base. And congratulations to Joe West. Joe uh, passed Harry Wendelstead on the all time list for games, or sorry, Bruce Fremming on the all time games umpired. 5,163 for Fremming, 5,164 for Joe. Congratulations, Cowboy Joe. Actually, he tied him tonight. He'll move past him tomorrow. Larry talked to Joe West about that just about two weeks ago. They were talking about it, and uh, Joe said it's, if, if I recall what Larry was saying, Joe said it's, it's an incredible honor to, to have that longevity. Yeah, you can think what you want of him, but I tell you what, you knew when he was behind the plate, it was going to be a well-called game. One ball, no strikes. Now, whether you like it or not, he's one of the, he's been one of the bigger personalities in the game for a long time. You never really want to have an umpire having that kind of personality. But his ball strike uh, work behind the plate is is really good. Yes, it is. You know, you watch this game tonight, and you know, Will Little behind the plate, and it's been a few calls here and there where you're like, wait, yeah. that was a strike a couple innings ago, but it wasn't a strike there. I think overall he's done. Yeah, he's been consistent, consistent with his calls. Yeah. The only lefty in the bullpen, Drew Pomerantz. The hard throwing Joe Kelly warming up for the Sox. Two balls, two strikes. Back toward the middle, flagged down by Embry. And one out. Oduble's coming up. Oduble is one for two. Oduble's grounded out. He's also singled. One of two hits for the Phillies. Porcello retired the Phillies in order six times. And now it's Embry. I'll tell you about think about how lucky I mean as a baseball fan that you watched this pitcher's duel tonight between I mean, Pavetta was fantastic. Yeah. As was Porcello. Yep. Yeah, one mistake by each pitcher. And Tommy Hunter made one mistake to Brock Holt. Oh and two. has provided the only run. Phillies have got to get Oduble going again. I know he had a hit today, but he was three for 21 on the road trip. Hasn't been the same player since. Uh, you know he got in July 1st. Yeah, he got into the power thing. He's hit a bunch of home runs. You know, he set a career high in home runs already this year. But yeah, you know, to me, it's taken away from his ability to use the whole field. They just appealed to see if he swung at that. Now his back foot might have crossed home, <laughs> but that don't mean the bat did. 
you think at some point they'll give him a new red sleeve? Odubel, the one on his right arm, got like balls have been gnawing on it. <laughs> He's wearing it out. I noticed like the last homestand there was one little hole. Now there's, you know, four or five little ventilation. <laughs> I've seen its better days. It might be past past its prime. He went around that time. It hit him though. Doesn't matter. He swung. It hit him. And there are two outs. Hit him in the back foot, but he swung. And Gabe Kapler's coming out. I don't think there's any doubt he swung. I thought he swung too. The argument he was trying to get out of the way, and that's why his bat crossed over. But I mean, this is a swing. He was nowhere near close to hitting it, obviously. No. It's a painful strikeout if you've never done it. it kind of stinks. Hmm. I took one in the chest once on a swing. <laughs> Didn't but, get a, but you swung. Didn't pick it up. Oh yeah, full swing. Didn't <laughs> pick it up out of the John Tudor's hand. Ah, uh, those lefties. I got never could see the ball of him, but I thought I'd guess. Guessed fastball. I guessed right. Problem was, it hit me in the chest after I swung at it. Not good carry. <laughs> no balls in one strike to Alfaro. Check swing. He did not go, and it's one and one. Out of the on deck circle again. I guess they're going to bring in Pomerantz if he's up. Outside, three and one. Started early. There's no guarantee you're going to get a fastball here, but if you do, you better be ready for it. Try to tie this thing up. That's a large human, isn't it? He is. Three and two. Well, ran pretty good. Yeah, ran, got in on him. Didn't get that thing out front.
And a strike three called. Embry works a one two three inning. Alfaro shakes his head no. The Phillies have struck out 12 times tonight. We'll head to the night. of the game. Well, early in the game, a big double play off the bat of Xander Bogarts. Watch Franco short hop, kept his eye on it, stayed down low. Makes a great throw to Cesar at second base. Knowing that that ball, how hard it was hit, and Bogarts isn't a burner, but an unbelievable play by Mikel Franco to help turn that double play. And that's our Hyundai defensive play of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well the Phillies have had a hit in one inning tonight John they have both their hits in one inning. They've struck out 12 times. And now they're just trying to keep the Red Sox. Lead at one and it'll be Victor Arana who comes on. Victor's been good for the Phillies no doubt about that. ERA 2.01. He's been even better since the All Star break. And JD Martinez takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Another disgruntled. Employee. You try to go back to that same spot. It's a Why little not? Wild. Yeah. Every time a Phillies pitcher records a pitch of 95 miles per hour or more, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. Getting some barking. Oh boy, I thought he went. It's close. I really he close, but. Good slider. You have to think he's going to get another one. Yeah. 
did. Over to third. Nice hop for Michael Franco. One out here in the ninth inning. And now Bogarts. Philly's pitching has uh, done a magnificent job this year against the Red Sox and now three games. You know it's the Phillies offense has struggled. There's no question about it. They went up against a buzzsaw tonight and Rick Porcello. The pitching has kept them in these games. Just got to find themselves the offense that they had earlier after the all-star break when they're averaging over five runs per game but even the first month or so of the season. Well, the pitching has been there all year really yes, the has. starting pitching. The heck ball hit off the glove of Alfaro than the face mask of Will Little. Gabe thinks it was a foul ball. Was it? I don't think so. Oh. Right off his mask. I don't even think it hit Alfaro's glove. Wow. That's uh, not going to win you a lot of friends as a catcher. Bouncer up the third base line, barehanded by Franco. And I don't know if he would have had him anyway, but it was a heck of an effort. An infield hit. Really nice effort. Yeah, heck of an effort. By Mikel. I mean, you know, no, no chance any other way of getting Bo Bogarts unless you barehand it. But yeah, I think even if the throws on line, I think he beats it. But. What he's he's shown he can make some spectacular plays, hasn't yeah, he? He sure has. Goes pitch is fouled. Wait, he still my heart. Was that a hit and run? It may have been a hit and run, oh, John. Oh my goodness! We're setting the game back a few years. Yeah, my God, you're going back to the olden days. Why do you think that there's not as I, much of that anymore? Too many strikeouts. That's too be many it, swings right? and misses. That's yeah, how do, you, how do you hit and run with guys who strike out 150 times a year? Yeah, you're right. Still thought the hit and run was on. Because he swung at a ball that was out of the strike zone. <laughs> that looked like it from here. Out to left field. Hoskins going back. He's got a beat on it. He was playing back that way. And two outs here in the ninth inning. And Eduardo Nunez is coming up. The Phillies uh, in their half of the ninth will have a pinch hitter. Probably Justin Bohr. Well, thank you. Against Kimbrell. And then the top of the order.
think that Justin Bohr is going to hit. Get down there right now with John Bailey going over all the Craig Kimbrell. Here, I give you a sky report. <laughs> Fastball at 100, slider at 92, and it might be his best pitch. But other than that, good luck. <laughs> Now he's going to go down and hope that someone can simulate that. Get him some swings. Back toward second base. Cesar has it. Tags out Bogarts. And the inning is over. All right. So last chance for the Phillies. Down two to one against one of the game's best closers. Craig Kimbrell is used to the mound here in Philadelphia. He's on with a one run lead when we get back. Second half ticket pack. The pack includes six of the remaining home games in 2018. Postseason ticket access plus pre sale opportunity for the potential to purchase two postseason home games at Citizens Bank Park. You also get priority access to 2019 season tickets. Order the ticket back by going to Phillies.com or call 215 463 1000. Well, there's Justin Bohr who will lead off the bottom of the ninth inning against Craig Kimbrell. Bohr has only faced Kimbrell one time. He's 0 for 1 against him. Craig Kimbrell has pitched a lot of games against the Phillies during his career, has an ERA under 1 against them. One of the more memorable nights was when the fans behind home plate were mocking his delivery back in September of 2014. He's only uh, 31 saves behind Bob Stanley and then well who knows if he'll be able to catch Jonathan Papelbon who's the all time saves leader for the Red Sox and the Phils. All right here we go bottom of the ninth inning two to one Red Sox. We'd like to see him get out in front of a hundred mile an hour oh, and catch man. it clean where that baby would end up. Of a slider out of the gate. Gotta be kidding me. Four, all right, I sat here for eight and a half inning, and you're gonna throw me an 87 mile an hour slider first pitch. Four has three pinch hit home runs this year, eight pinch hit RBIs. One ball, one strike. Rick Porcello started. He went seven innings, struck out ten. Sale struck out twelve the other day. First time that Boston starting pitchers have ever reached double digits in strikeouts and no walks in consecutive games. Inside two and one. Those are the numbers against the Phillies. Slider foul back. He has.
has allowed seven home runs. Yeah, that, that slider is really a knuckle curve. Whatever it is, it's still 87 to 90. Yeah, the 2 2 pitch. 3 and 2. He has given up seven home runs this year. Make it eight. Ball four. Well, you know, we should have mentioned that one thing Bork can do besides Homer, he can walk with the best of them. Scott Kingry is going to come on to pinch run. A reminder after the ball game is Philly's post game live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Amy Fadul, Ben Davis, Tommy Green, and Corey Seidman are standing by. They got two things to talk about Porcello and Pavetta, but they yeah. also have to talk about hopefully a Phillies comeback here. Yeah, and this is, you know, Kimbrell, like most power pitching pitchers, closers especially. Not very quick to home, so I, I I would love to see Kingry try to take second base here. Leon has stolen or has thrown out five base runners this year. Ball guy. Think he's looking at when he Kimbrel when he comes to a stretch. He's looking back at second base. Like, I don't know. Like is, is Bogart's telling him throw over? Like he shakes his head, throw over. You know what? I don't know. <laughs> I he mean, does, he, he does never, do it after every pitch. Yeah, he never looks at Kingry at first. Stolen. One out. Cesar now 0 for 13 against the Red Sox this year. Yeah, I think that's one of those you got to let that baby go. Yeah, it wasn't even the perfect pitch to hit either. See Scott try to go early. We got a left handed hitter, makes Leon, you know, maybe a split second more to, to clear the left handed hitter. That time Kimball did not look back, he just went to the plate. Goes, pitch is fouled back. He had the base stolen again. Well, you have to think it's not the hit and run. No. He's 
still may go even though this might be a knuckle curve to go after the strikeout. Be a better pitch to run on. Yeah. The only problem is you run with two strikes. Sometimes the hitter feels like I have to try to protect the runner and they'll chase a bad pitch. And this is where if Scott is running, he throws the slider. You got to peek in. In case that ball gets past Leon, maybe you can get the third. No balls, two strikes to Williams. One out here in the ninth inning. Line drive caught by Bogarts. Two outs. And Bogarts have said he didn't drop that one. Nick wasn't running. That's such a hard ball to drop. Yeah. I, I don't think. I think it would have been awfully hard for him to drop it or let it bounce. Catch that short, Hob. Yeah, unless he backed up. Once he left his feet, he had to grab it. And now Cabrera, 0 for 3 tonight. He has 12 hits with the Phillies. Yourself ahead, 1 0, and you leak out early to try to catch up that fastball. Throws you a slider. Phillies are down to their final strike here in the ninth inning. Two strikes. And the pitch. We'll have to find that baseball tomorrow, I think. Out of town scoreboard, Freddie Freeman at a game tying home run in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Miami and Atlanta tied at six. St. Louis leads Washington 5 0 in the fifth. Phillies are worried about right here. One and two, two outs, bottom of the ninth, down two to one. There goes Kingry. Pitches outside, throw to second is high. All right, so now Scott is in, in scoring position, and the count two and two to his Drupal Cabrera. This is the first time the Phillies have had a runner in scoring position tonight. It's only the second inning that they've had a base run. So, Make might as well count. bring him in. So, what you're saying is every time we've had a runner touch second base and score, it's been a positive thing. The Red Sox are safe on the mound visits, just in case you were worried about that. <laughs> Will Little went out there pretty quick, didn't he? Pretty quickly. <laughs> 
Two and two. How about a ground ball to center field? Seriously. That's all. Kimball's ready, so is Cabrera. Swing and a miss. Ball gets away. Leon picks it up, throws to first in time. How he threaded the needle right over the shoulder of Cabrera is beyond me. And the Red Sox take game one by a final score of two to one. Boy, for a moment, you thought the Phillies were getting a huge break. But the strikeout and the putout gives the Red Sox the victory here tonight. Well, it's that slider. It, you know, Kimball throws often and he can bounce it. And Leon, I, you know, when he threw that ball, I thought, wow, this, this could hit Cabrera's because I saw he wasn't running in the line. Well, he kind of was there at the end, but unbelievable throw and catch by Mitch Moreland at first base. Well, the Red Sox hold the Phillies to just two hits tonight. They win it two to one. Our Chevrolet player of the game was right at a Rick Porcello who picks up his 15th victory of the season John. Yeah, and he was really good Tom you know he had all his pitches working early. I mean the first at bat to Cesar to start the game. His first th four pitches were all different and. Yeah, but he kept that going through the whole thing. He made the one mistake to Reese Reese hits it out but that's the only run. The Phillies scored but other than that I mean it was. A, a great night for Rick Porcello. The breaking ball was working. The change up, the two seamer, the four seamer, seemingly anything he really wanted to throw, he could throw, and that's why he is our Chevrolet player of the game. Frank Kimbrell picks up a 36th save. He's one more than last year. Red Sox win it two to one. We'll wrap it up right after this.